Every September, America mourns the loss of the thousands of innocent lives taken in September 2001. Nothing in this video is meant in any way to deny or minimize the suffering that resulted from that horrible attack on our country and our fellow citizens. That said, there is an old adage every politician in Washington knows, and it was best explained by former Illinois Congressman Rahm Emanuel. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. In the days following the September 2001 attack, the Bush-Cheney administration and their allies in Congress took that adage to heart and seized the opportunity to enact an Orwellian mass surveillance law known as the Patriot Act, while most of Congress and our fellow citizens were still scared and in shock from the attack. This Saturday, October 26, 2024, marks the 23rd anniversary of the signing of the USA Patriot Act. In this video, we are going to examine how the Patriot Act was crammed through Congress in less than 72 hours and the impact it has had on our country in the 23 years since former President Bush famously proclaimed, Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Because, as we all know, the only reason anyone could possibly disagree with shredding the Fourth Amendment and turning America into a surveillance state is because they are on the side of people who fly planes into buildings. I'm John Padfield, an engineer turned state representative turned business professor, and this is Business Reform, where we discuss issues at the intersection of business, technology, and society. Our right to privacy had already been in slow decline for at least 111 years prior to the 2001 attacks. I made a video about two months ago in which I quoted U.S. Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis, who wrote clear back in 1890 that, quote, Recent inventions and business methods call attention to the next step which must be taken for the protection of the person and for securing to the individual the right to be let alone. Thirty-eight years later, in 1928, Justice Brandeis wrote, quote, Subtler and more far-reaching means of invading privacy have become available to the government. Discovery and invention have made it possible for the government by means far more effective than stretching upon the rack to obtain disclosure in court of what was whispered in the closet. For what it's worth, he wrote that nearly two decades before the transistor was invented. But the passage of the Patriot Act in 2001 was a tipping point where the gradual erosion of our right to privacy accelerated like it had fallen off a cliff. The USA Patriot Act is a contrived acronym that stands for Uniting and Strengthening America by Providing Appropriate Tools Required to Intercept and Obstruct the T-Word. I really don't like having to censor myself, but if I say the T-Word or even mention the exact date of the 2001 attack, I run the risk of the YouTube algorithm limiting the reach of this video. Weighing in at 130 pages, the Patriot Act is nearly 60,000 words long and has a flesh reading ease score of 27, which means less than 5% of American adults can read at that level. And for those who can, the average reading speed for documents at that level is only 100 to 200 words per minute. So it would take 5 to 10 uninterrupted hours just to read the Patriot Act. That 5 to 10 hours is important when you consider the timing of the act being crammed through Congress. The Patriot Act was introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives on Tuesday, October 23rd. The very next day, it completely bypassed the House committee process and went straight to a floor vote, where it was passed by a vote of 357 to 66 on Wednesday, October 24th. The very next day, it bypassed the Senate committee process and went straight to a Senate floor vote, where it was passed by a vote of 98 to 1 on Thursday, October 25th. The following day, President Bush held a signing ceremony for the Patriot Act on Friday, October 26th. Remember, less than 5% of American adults can read at the level this legislation was written at, and it takes 5 to 10 uninterrupted hours to read. The House passed the bill just one day after it was introduced, 
and the Senate passed the bill just one day after the House, which ensured the public had no idea what was in this piece of legislation. If anyone believes every member of the House and Senate bothered to read the bill before voting on it, I will make you a great deal on a bridge I own in New York. The Patriot Act was introduced in the House by a career politician, Republican Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner from Wisconsin. Mr. Sensenbrenner is the epitome of a career politician. He graduated high school in 1961. Seven years later, he graduated college with a bachelor's in political science and a law degree. That same year, he was elected to the Wisconsin legislature, where he spent 10 years before being elected to his first of 21 consecutive terms in Congress. He then retired in 2021 after spending 52 years in elected office. There was never any doubt the Patriot Act would pass the Republican-controlled House because it was wanted so badly by the Republican president. The bigger question was whether this Orwellian legislation would make it through the Democrat-controlled Senate. Fortunately for the people and federal agencies who wanted this legislation passed, on September 18, 2001, someone began sending letters laced with anthrax spores through the mail, infecting staffers who worked for Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle, Senate Judiciary Chairman Patrick Leahy, and the strongest defender of the U.S. Constitution in the Senate at that time, Senator Russ Feingold of Wisconsin. Ironically, there were no letters sent to anyone in the Republican-controlled House. This additional attack on the Senate seems to have convinced senators that the federal intelligence and law enforcement agencies needed more surveillance power to keep them safe. When the Senate voted on the Patriot Act on October 25, 2001, Senator Russ Feingold stood alone in opposing it. After losing his bid for re-election in 2010, Senator Feingold went on to become the president of the American Constitution Society. For what it's worth, in 2011, the U.S. government paid $2.5 million in a wrongful death lawsuit brought by survivors of one of the anthrax victims because the anthrax used in the 2001 attack appears to have come from a U.S. Army bio lab. Also, for what it's worth, in 2008, a federal prosecutor, quote, formally declared a deceased researcher at a U.S. Army bio lab was the sole person responsible for the 2001 anthrax attack, and the prosecutor claimed they were confident they could have proven his guilt to a jury if the researcher had still been alive to stand trial. However, a 233-page study published in 2011 by the National Academy of Sciences cast doubt on those claims. Links to all of my sources are in the description of this video. That is the history of how the USA Patriot Act became law in just four days in October 2001. But what did the law actually do? It opened Pandora's box by eroding privacy protections in 11 existing federal acts, such as the Electronic Communications Privacy Act, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, and the Right to Financial Privacy Act. In other words, the Patriot Act set the stage for the warrantless mass surveillance of Americans' phone records, banking records, emails, internet search history, and everything else Edward Snowden blew the whistle on in June 2013. Numerous lawsuits have been filed against different provisions of the Patriot Act, with varying degrees of success. A few sections have been struck down by courts as unconstitutional, and the law itself has been amended by Congress several times over the past 23 years. But this law, passed through Congress in less than 72 hours, remains the single biggest reason for the massive expansion of government surveillance. If you would like to hear more about the Patriot Act, please let me know in the comments section below. If you appreciate this type of content, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching.